You are listening to Life's the VK podcast, a weekly podcast series focusing on living a life without limitations. I'm your host, Cha Jones. Each week, I interview purposeful people about what they do and how they do it. Some have traditional professions, while others have designed unconventional careers. But what matters most is that they all are living a life where business and pleasure never separate. Each day is a vacay. So let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Vacay podcast, where you're designing life on your own terms, so you're always living on purpose. Yes, it's another episode of Life's a Vacay podcast. I'm your host, Child Jones. Today, I'll be talking about rising from the ashes and walking in purpose with Miss Nikki Campbell. Besides being hella funny, which you will hear, Nikki is a professional makeup artist for the stars and the owner of Blue Artistry Cosmetics. Y'all, welcome. Hello, Nikki Campbell. How are you doing today? Hello. Well, look here. God is good. <laughs> uh, that's how I'm doing today. God is good. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is all the time. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be like, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> That's so, that's cool too. I'm a best friend <laughs> in everybody's head and, and vice versa. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So Nikki. Like yes. so okay, you doing a lot. You have a YouTube show that I just got done watching. I was like, oh, there you go, Nikki. <laughs> she got fedoras out here. I was like, oh, oh my God. Yes, I got my hand in everything. You are a makeup artist. Miss yes. Blue Artistry, yes. tell my viewers or listeners, I got, I got viewers now, but <laughs> listeners, yes. I'm going to speak that into existence, we have viewership, Amen. but Amen. right now we got listeners, so listeners, tell my listeners how you got started as a makeup artist. Okay, this is a long story, but I can make it short. Okay, okay, so America, this is how I like to talk on my Instagram, America. <laughs> Come on, America. Come on, America. Journey, America. A whole journey. Well, we're okay. worldwide, so come on, world. So you come on, worldwide in the nations, America in the nations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but how I got started? Okay, so I was in college, and uh, this is about two thousand three ish, maybe something like that. I was in college, and I was a tomboy growing up. I was always a tomboy. I felt comfortable in tomboy clothes and just hanging with the dudes. And so when I got to college, I was like, wow, these dudes are looking quite attractive, you know? <laughs> and so I was like, I, <laughs> and I want a boyfriend because I've, I've never, I've never really had a boyfriend. So I wanted a boyfriend and that's how I got kind of started in makeup. I was hanging around the guys and they would always talk about this girl. I'm going to say her name because she always give her credit to this day. Her name is Cheryl Coppett and she's so beautiful. And the guys used to always talk about her. So me and her were cool. And so I just asked her, can you show me like, how you do your makeup and stuff like that. And she was like, sure. And so she just kind of let me watch her put on makeup. And um, that's how I got into doing makeup. And so I started doing my face. And then we had a modeling troupe in our college and they were asking me if if I would do their makeup. And I'm sitting here like, okay, because you know, I ain't got no kid. Like, (laughs) I don't know how this is going to happen, but you know, I'll do what I can do. And people started liking my work. So after I graduated, I went back home and the pastor was saying due to the economy, I mean, this was about 2005, maybe. Yeah, 2005. He said, due to the economy, you need more than we need more than one income. And I'm thinking like, well, what can I do? So a friend from high school actually got in touch with me. She was having it was her birthday. I did her makeup. She's a photographer. And she was like, hey, I have a shoot. Do you want to do, you know, the makeup for the shoot? And I was like, well, uh, I'm not a makeup artist, but, you know, what every makeup artist does when they first start, they go to the drugstore. And they just start picking up a whole bunch of makeup and they say they got a kid. That's almost every makeup artist. <laughs> every makeup artist. So that's what I did. <laughs> and so I did it. And it was actually two, two Caucasian girls. So, you know, I was clueless. Like, I was like, what am I about to do? You know, I used to doing my face. But the shoot ended up working out well. And so we kind of started a team. It was me, her, and another girl who did styling. And we just started a, I forgot what our little team was called, creative something. I don't know. But we started like a little team and then eventually the Lord called me to come to Nashville. And that's kind of my start. I love it. I love it. First of (laughs) all, 
I, why didn't I know that you were this funny? What? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Tiffany Haddish? I get it from my father. I get it from my father. I apologize to America and all the nations thus far. I'm just, I know. That's, that just keeps me going, girl. Lord, I never knew. I, as, as much as I've seen you out in the streets of the Nashville city, I, I didn't know. But now oh my I know. God. That's so funny. That is hilarious. But okay, so you got started with your drugstore kit. Yes. And you was out here doing Caucasian faces. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, and I got to tell you, I forgot this one little itty bit. There was actually a guy, and let me do a disclaimer for the for America and the nations because <laughs> when I started out, I wasn't all the way in God. Okay, so this is a disclaimer, but for the things I'm about to tell you, I was not all the way in God. So, <laughs> so I had this, <laughs> I had this one gig where this man actually hired me to do a, a swimsuit calendar, but he was using a lot of strippers, okay, and so okay. yeah, look disclaimer. So I I. <laughs> So I basically, I didn't have a kit and he was like, well, what did, what are the things that you need? And I basically told him a whole kit and he actually bought my kit. He bought everything that I needed. Yeah. He bought everything I needed for my kit. And, and I, I just wanted to say that real quick <laughs> okay. because I didn't, I didn't continue to use drugstore makeup. Eventually I, I upgraded to Mac. <laughs> yes. Eventually. Yes. Eventually. And, and also this is another thing I wanted to say really quick was after I graduated and I kind of got with you know my little group one of the girls from high school she was we, we were all high school friends she said hey this guy named Kendrick Black who I went to school with he actually tutored me in calculus he became a makeup artist he worked for Mac so while I was working a healthcare consultant firm um, on my break I would go over to the mall and watch him for a little bit and then I would go back to work so that's how I kind of got a little bit of some of my training. Yes. We, yes. We, we, we were doing on-the-job training on our lunch breaks. We were I getting <laughs> drugstore makeup. Yes, hey, ma'am. We were that's, starting that's from scratch. And that, <laughs> that's important because, you know, you have a life that a lot of people would love to have. You are not just a makeup artist. You have, you know, doing some great things, but you traveled the world with some very famous people. Yes. And how did that happen? Because for those of you who don't know, she she travels a lot with Miss Cece Winings. You, she does a lot of videos with Miss Cece Winings. So but you do a lot more makeup for other people as well. But how did you first land that gig? So how did you go from being or using drugstore makeup to getting your right. Mac kit to now, <laughs> hey, I'm I'm rolling with the big stars, gospel <laughs> stars? Yes, that's another long story, but I'll try to make it short for America and the Nations. So, so when I, the Lord gave me a vision to come to Nashville and when I first got here, I really didn't have a prayer life, but God was calling me. And so when I got here, I thought, you know, okay, God didn't call me here. I'm about to blow up. You know, I'm about to be a millionaire. And I became homeless actually. Because <laughs> sometimes wow. like before the Lord takes you places, sometimes he has to humble you. You know, he has to, to put you in the wilderness a little bit because you got to, he, he has to train you. You know, mm -hmm. wilderness, a lot of time is a training and a lot of people get sad in the wilderness, but no, it's the perfect time to like start building your relationship with God and start understanding your purpose, you know, and, and getting some things into order. So around the wilderness time, I had become homeless and I was about to move back to, to Charlotte because um, <laughs> I was about to give up. And um, I went to I went to church and the, the, a woman spoke and basically it inspired me. And so I said, Lord, OK, I said, did you call me to do this? And I said, so if I die in the streets of Nashville, as long as I die with you, I'm going to be happy. But I'm going to continue. We're going to ride this until the wheels fall off. That's literally what I said to God. <laughs> so and then around that time that I was that I came to Nashville, which was in 2009, the economy failed. So people weren't hiring. Mm -hmm. So that was another reason why like, I, I wasn't making any money. I couldn't, I couldn't get a job because I, I had a college degree and the jobs where I was just trying to find anything, I was overqualified. So anywho, when I said that prayer, um, that was like on, I think a Saturday on that Monday, I got a call from three jobs. And on that Wednesday, I was choosing between two. So I had befriended some people and they kind of, let me kind of fast forward through that part. <laughs> I started, <laughs> um, once I kind of, once God started, when I surrendered to God, he, he started opening the doors to, uh, to other levels. 
So at this particular level, um, I was working under a celebrity makeup artist named J.K. Hunter, and people started finding out more about me Mm -hmm. because a lot of people, when they like your work, they'll start referencing you or referring you, I'm sorry. And so uh, how do I explain it? I was doing a movie. I got on this like little independent movie. This, I got fired off the movie, but that's, it wasn't my fault, America. (laughs) America and okay. uh, nations. You gonna have to I tell us that story though. I was, <laughs> I was a scapegoat. It wasn't my fault, y'all. And so, <laughs> and so during that, when I got fired, the next day I got a call from Debbie Winans, who is CC Winans' little sister. Mm-hmm. I got a call from her camp, and they wanted me to work with her because uh, she. I was referred by somebody else that couldn't do the gig. So after I did her makeup, because I wasn't working the the movie, so I had time to do her makeup. Then once I was done working with her, the movie called me back, apologized and rehired me. Okay, come on so, now. So that, that was God all day. Like, I, I really believe that that was God that like kicked me off that movie for a second because she was the door to basically CC and a whole bunch of other people. So I started working with CC Wine's little sister first. I did her makeup. CC was being honored being my Trailblazer Awards in Atlanta. And I went down there. I did Debbie and Angie, which is her two little sisters. And she liked their makeup and called me, I want to say probably a few weeks later to work with her. Wow. First of all, I mean, you're we we also need to get you in to be a comedian at some point in, <laughs> in, in this journey, not today. But at some point, okay. we're going we gonna to do, we do Christian comedy. <laughs> oh, no, the Saints ain't ready. The Saints ain't ready. I, I can't do it. <laughs> but you over here getting fired, rehired, yeah. stepping yes. into your purpose, doing work yes. for some famous people who then led you to a bigger fame. So now you are, you know, you're no longer homeless. No. But let's talk about that part because, you know, a lot of times when you are trying to find your purpose or to even walk in faith, mm-hmm. there are moments of fear and moments yeah. of tribulation where you just like, mm, I don't know how this is going to work out. Right. Right. Where, where did you find your strength? And what was that moment that you said, okay, I'm not going to go back to Charlotte. I'm going to stick this out. But why? You know, what was the why? Yes. Yes. So um, when I went to, I was going to a church and they had a guest speaker. I think she was out of Atlanta and she was talking about Prophet Elijah when he was in the wilderness. And she said that even though he was in the wilderness, he never went without food or water. And so I had to kind of like think about that, like, wow, you know, I got to a point where I'm in this wilderness. And y'all, I was actually staying, I was, I, I started staying at this place called Stadium Inn, which was downtown. It's no longer, they, I think they demolished it or made it into something new, but um, I was staying there and the pastor told me that I had to get out. He found out somehow to this day, I want to know how he found out that I was staying there, but it was a place where a lot of prostitutes <laughs> and <laughs> this is my story. Look, Miss Jones, you called me to do <laughs> Nikki, <girl. laughs> to do this uh podcast. Okay, hey, I give you the truth. Bless somebody, baby. Bless somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was a place where, even though it was a hotel, people were actually had been living there for years, and they were, and a lot, and the place was also being used for where pimps would pimp out prostitutes. I didn't know that, but come to find out, my pastor is an ex pimp. That pastor was an ex pimp. This is my story, y'all. I ain't make I cannot make this up. My pastor at the time was an ex pimp, so he knew about this place. And so he came in. He found out I was there, and he was like, "Hey, you got to get out of there." And he was like, "I'm going to let you stay with a lady that's in my church." And the lady, her husband, actually died in jail. I promise y'all, this is my story. He died in jail. <laughs> And she had an extra room at her house. So I was staying with her. So the stadium inn was horrible. It it smelled like a nursing home and just funk. They said they clean your room every day. I got to give y'all details of what I went through. They said they'll clean your room every day, but there was roaches. I was afraid to like step on the floor, the walls. I literally went to Walmart and got like cleaner to wash the walls like the wall y'all remember that episode that part in a uh, color purple we uh, see the way into the I'm kitchen done. you know what <laughs> yes, I'm she went I to the kitchen and she started washing them walk. like I was washing the walls and they turned from like brown to white oh lord like that place was absolutely disgusting but my best friend who I've known since I was 12 she gave me money to stay there that was the cheapest place I could find it was 117 dollars a week 
And so, <laughs> so anywho, I, <laughs> the past time I was there, he put me in the other lady's house. The other lady's house, she had, I don't want to say too much, but she, her house was in horrible shape. It was falling apart. So at wow. that point I was like, Lord, like I'm ready to go home. And then we had the guest uh, pastor who said, you know, prophet Elijah was in the wilderness and he never went out food or water. And I started thinking back over everything oh. that I've been through. And I said, wow, God, no matter, even though I'm up in these streets, you always put shelter over my head. Even if it wasn't the type of shelter that most people could live in, you mm-hmm. know, still I had shelter, you know, I wasn't sleeping in my car. You know, yes. the, the places I might have been with roaches and and horrible odors, but I was protected. Like mm-hmm. no one ever raped me. No one ever stole from me. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was really protected. And also the Lord saved my car because I literally lost everything. And I felt in my spirit that I was going to lose everything. And I asked God if he could just please help me with my, like, just if I can have my car. Because I didn't want to be in a foreign place because I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be in a foreign place. And, and I, I ain't got no ride. <laughs> like, like anything you know if I'm gonna be homeless like I can sleep in the car you know and so I was like a couple of months behind in my car payment and out of nowhere the job that I told you I was leaving on my lunch break to go and look at the makeup artist it was a healthcare mm-hmm. consultant firm I got a call from them and this is like two or three years later uh two years later I got a call from them. they were like hey you got a 401k with about three thousand dollars in it they were like, would you like us to roll it over into another 401k? Or would you like yeah, to check? Yeah. I said, cut me that check. Check, <laughs> check please. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Cut me that check. And so, and that was the Lord literally saving my car. I was able to pay up, pay, you know, what I had of debt. And I was able to put a little money in there to kind of help me. And so that's literally what kind of what I did. And I, I basically said, okay, like, Lord, you, you protected me. You, you covering me. I can see you like, yes. you know, when you grow up, when you grow up, you grow up on your parents' faith, like your parent, parents make you go to church. They make you, you know, sing in the children's choir and all this other stuff. But I had a moment in the wilderness where the Lord actually met me. Like, like I actually met him for who he is. Wow. You know, I'm not on anybody else's face. Now I faith. I've now built my own and right. I know him. he's a friend. He's real. Just like you are. Right. You know, and so it was that when I saw that he had my back and he's always had my back, that he covered me the way he covered me. I said, OK, I don't know what you got in this future, but we're going to ride this to the wheels fall off. Yes, I love it. So oftentimes when people you know, when we're talking about life of AK and mm-hmm. creating basically the life of your dreams, doing it on your own terms, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it requires that you have some faith and you obviously have had faith mm-hmm. during this, <laughs> this process. Mm-hmm. And this has been very unconventional. What would you tell somebody who is, you know, in whatever they are trying to do? They're in this place where they don't know what's coming next. And they they may not have the same faith conditioning that you have had to endure, but they're standing on the brink of something, right? And they're trying to figure Mm -hmm. out what's next. What would you tell them to encourage them to to move forward in that and just to walk and believe that it is all going to work out for their good? Yes. The first thing I would tell them to do is to make sure it's their purpose, because you have a lot of people that are doing what they want to do, but God got a whole nother different plan for you. You know, some things are hindered because it's not what God wants for you and he's trying to protect you. But some things are hindered because there's some things that God's trying to teach you before you walk in it. Because a lot of people, perfect example, a lot of people can get up with Will Smith. A lot of people can get up to the very, very top and the enemy can come and just snatch it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And God's trying to protect you from, like the Bible says that his blessings come without sorrows. So there's reasons why a lot of people aren't stepping over onto that platform quite yet. You know, there's some things that God wants to show you before you get there. But the first thing I want to say is make sure that it's your purpose because you can't walk in somebody else's shoes. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Make sure it's your purpose. One thing that I did to make sure that, because I actually, y'all, I actually want to be a singer. I wanted to be the next Whitney Houston. (laughs) That's something that even in college, that was something even in college, like I had my God, I had music on the radio. I had, I was playing, I was singing in in some clubs, but I was wanting to sing like inspirational music. So that's kind of what I did. So anyway, make a long story short. I, when I came over to the things of God, there was a girl who found me in the midst of my sin and she pulled me out. And that's what started my my true relationship with God. And uh, uh, she taught me about fasting. 
So what I did was for a whole week, I fasted. And I think I did like um, smoothies just during the day. And I prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And I read the word for at least 30 minutes. But back, but like then my heart was so on fire for God. I was reading the word for like three hours. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> God, I want to know who you are. So I did that for a week. And I want to say probably about, I started on Monday, probably around, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. The Lord gave me a dream where I was in the production. I was in a production and I was saving fish. So I knew that he was going to use me in the industry to save lives. Mm. Um, a lot of people know this, the industry is, well, some people do, the industry is very dark. You're right. It's very dark, especially in the makeup artist realm. It's, <laughs> it's very, very dark. A lot of those people do not know God. And God said he was going to use me to save fish and dreams. Fish um, means souls. Mm. And so that's how I knew that I was in the right place. So at that point, um, what I was doing was I started to, uh, what do you call it? I didn't give, re- I didn't send out resumes because I didn't know where God wanted me. So all I did was I would pray and I would worship and my phone would ring. Wow. Like I literally let God be my boss. Mm. I let God be my boss. So he was the one that was putting my name in people's mouths. And, and he was the one that was, you know, uh, putting my name on people's thoughts. Like God did that. I can't take any credit for, for my career. All I said was yes to him and I pray and I worship and my phone rings. So that's what I would just tell people to do. If you want to even fast to make sure that it's your purpose. And then if God says, yes, this is your purpose, you don't have anything to worry about. All you have to do is pray, worship, and just keep working. Just keep working towards it. Don't give up, you know, pray, bind the enemy. Cause a lot of times the enemy doesn't want you to walk in your purpose. Cause he knows like, he don't want you at the top. Right. He's jealous of you. You know what I mean? He's, he's very jealous of you. He can never be an archangel ever again. So he wants to cancel everybody's purpose. So you just have to just keep praying and fighting and, and just keep going forward and just believe, okay, God, you said this is what it is. And you got to hold on to what God showed you. You have to hold on to every time the Lord saved your life. You got to hold on to every time the Lord kept you. You got to hold on to that and keep those thoughts constantly in your mind and let that be your, your weapon of warfare. Yes. Yes. And yes, I say yes mm-hmm. to it all. It, you know, it's something to surrender and then to be faithful and to walk in your purpose. And oftentimes the problem is that people don't really know what their purpose is and, and they don't even know what to ask. Yeah. Because what I find is that a lot of people try to figure out the how, how am I going to do it? And that's yes. not really what is the, that's not the main question. The question it's is, not- what? Because the how God's already answered that question. Right. Know that. Yeah. So that's not the main focus. Right. So now that you are doing this work, you're no longer homeless, not living with the prostitutes. Um, you know, you, you know, <laughs> no longer living at the lady's <laughs> house. We, we don't even want to know how her husband died. But uh uh-uh. uh. So you're on the other side and mm-hmm. you are doing this great work. Tell us what it's like to a day in the life of Nikki Campbell, the blue artistry <laughs> out here flying oh places to place. How, how has this life blessed you? My goodness. A lot of times the Lord will put you in places, not just you to be blessed, but f- to bless others. I think my life has become an inspiration for many people and I didn't really expect it. Like, you know, when you when you get to the top, you, <laughs> well, I'm not even at the very, very top yet, but when you get to a certain high level that people always, people didn't support you on your journey and you almost want to use it and be like, ah I told you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When, when the Lord told me to come to Nashville, a lot of people were like, what? Because I left very quickly. Like I, I didn't have anything left in Charlotte. Like I was living with my mama. You know what I mean? That's a whole nother story too. Cause it was a bad relationship y'all. And then I left this job and I moved. It's a whole, that's a whole nother story. But anywho, in saying all of that, it's like, you kind of want to just be like, aha, like I got here, but that's not really the thing is, it's beyond that. It's like, there's so many people that are struggling that are trying to get to even close to where you are. And just knowing that the Lord used me to inspire others and even open doors for others. It's really what it's all about. I'm very grateful. I always told God that I want to link up with an artist and travel the world. I don't even know if I told God that. I think I just always had that desire in my heart. That was just always a desire in my heart. And the Lord ended up giving that to me. I didn't travel a lot when I was a child. So traveling is, I love it, y'all. Like, oh my God, you can go to the hotels and 
You ain't got to clean up. You just throw <laughs> your little towels over there and the people wash you and they make your bed. You ain't got your mama saying, hey, man, you need to make your bed. Like the hotel people do it. Then they got good food downstairs. This is just like, this is just like my bonus, you know. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you got all this good food. And then like just this week, I, let me let me tell y'all about this weekend. This will help y'all understand what I'm going through. So I got a, um, a Lifeway Christian Bookstore. That's actually one of the places where when I first got to Nashville, I was able to have a job there, um, just a little part-time job. And they ended up now to, now I actually, they fly me places to do makeup for them, which is incredible. I used to be a cashier in the store. <laughs> now I'm flying to do makeup. Yes, people, elevation. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> so they called me to do a gig down there with some uh, Lifeway authors. And so I, I went down there. That was on Friday. I went down there. We had an amazing time. The gig was actually on Saturday. And then, and the authors are just, all we did was just laugh and just have a great time. It was a beautiful, that's one place where they are true Christians. They treat you with respect. It's beautiful. And so I came back that night, that Saturday night, and then I started washing my brushes and I repacked. And then that morning, what was that? Sunday, Sunday morning, I flew out to San Antonio, Texas. So I was in Orlando, Florida. I flew out to San Antonio, Texas because I had to meet Cece out there because she had to work with Cornerstone Church. They wanted her to do a concert out there. They actually ended up putting her on a resort. And one thing about that is a lot of times the blessings that Cece get, because I'm her makeup artist, I get some of them blessings too. Yes. So, <laughs> so I was able to- The overflow. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let me flow over here. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I will not deny that flow. And so, so I was able to go in there and they had, they, um, it's a resort where they actually had the PGA tour, the golf PGA tour. Mm -hmm. They sometimes host Mm -hmm. them. So you can only imagine how incredible this resort is. They had a water park, amazing food and restaurants. And so I was able to, and I had passes. I had passes to go to the water park and all these different things and free. It's all free, y'all. Like it's all free. I don't pay for the planes. I don't, you know, like the, the, the food we get per diems. I don't really need to pay for the food. Like everything is free. So that is what it is. But I, I just enjoy everything. I go meet CC, do her makeup for about an hour, make sure she stays touched up, make sure, look, she, make sure she's great on camera. And then I go back to the hotel and finish enjoying the festivities. Yeah. That's what, but doing all that traveling, it does take a toll on you. So for the last couple of days, I have been asleep. <laughs> I, I, I might wake up, post something on Instagram and like feed my dog and go back to sleep. But I, I enjoy the traveling. I, I hope I'm not like going on and on and on. But and no, because I really <laughs> I want people to understand. Now, obviously, that's the glamour aspect of it. That's, you yes. know, when all things work out in your favor, that, that's yes. amazing, right? But what yes. about the moments where, you know, there are days when, you obviously are like, you know, I did I sign up for this? Like there has to be some challenges. Yeah. What are what are some of the challenges? Cause I I, I want to kind of give a balanced perspective of yes. the industry. Yes, it takes a lot out of you. Uh, oh my goodness. It's tiring. The work is not hard. It's just you being there, you have to get up early in the morning to prep and do all this other stuff get there you're there all day you know the traveling making sure you're on time with this and that everything is a schedule it's it can take a lot out of you you know and being as being a makeup artist a lot of times I'm more or less taking care of the client and less of myself Mm -hmm. you know so it's so you know that point where I can get some rest I can get some time is good but I get like my phone rings every day I have emails every day and it's like when can I rest you know what I mean? Like I literally have to hire people to do things that I can't. I have to hire people to clean my apartment. I have to hire people to take my dog out. Like it's <laughs> because I don't, I don't have the time. I've ended up hiring more makeup artists. Um, I started the Blue Artistry Glam Agency so I could send other makeup artists out because my schedule is too booked to take anybody else. You know, sometimes I forget to call my mom. Sometimes I forget to check in with my family because it, it, some days I don't even know what day it is. I don't know if it's Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Sometimes I call CC and be like, good morning. She'd be like, Nikki, it's the afternoon. I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it takes a huge toll. So even in the past couple of days, my phone has still been ringing. I still get emails, but I just, I'm like, God, I just want to rest. Mm. I just want, I just want sleep, you know, but, and it's sometimes where I almost want to cry. I'm so tired because I just want five more minutes in the bed, but I got to get up because I got call time, right. you know? And, and so there's been times where I have cried a tiny bit. 
um, just out of exhaustion. But then I stop and I'd be like, God, thank you, because I asked for this. Right. I asked for this. You know, there's a lot of makeup artists that don't their phone does not ring. Right. You know, and you have consistent work and that's a blessing because there are a lot of artists who don't have consistent work and they're not really walking in all of their purpose and not using all of their talents and gifts. And so it seems like it has been an amazing journey. We are wrapping up. And oh. so <laughs> I know because I want to keep laughing. I want to hear about these stories. I need to hear about yes. a little bit more than pimps and prostitutes and all oh, that. Love. I didn't see any of them. Uh, I, I never met a pimp or a prostitute in this place. I just, I just know they were there. Because when you walk, when you walk through the, the hallway, it says, if you're found in another person's room, you'll be kicked out. And I was like, what are they talking about? <laughs> like, why can't you be in this hotel? I'm sorry. <laughs> been a bl- you, you bless my, my soul. And I know that there are some listeners who are trying to walk on faith and they're trying to figure yes. out what it is that they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, when I started this podcast, really about just, you know, someone asking me, did I have a vacation day? And I'm like, vacation day? My life is a vacay. And that means so much. It, it means many things to different people. And but but oftentimes people see the glamour of it. That's why I really wanted you to sh- tell us about some of the things that are challenges and, and some of the, the long nights and early mornings and the things you have to give up because oftentimes you're giving up something to get that thing that you really want. So yeah. it's been a and, blessing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And one other thing that I didn't really uh, speak about, I know you're wrapping up, but also, you know, a lot of people want to be like, oh, you work with this person, you work with that person. And even though it's been a quite blessed, I'm not even talking about CC because I, I love working with her and all we do is laugh, y'all. Like she's, y'all, she's funny for real, for real. And so, <laughs> but just speaking of other people that I've worked with, it's not always easy, you know, because they're, they're human. Everybody mm-hmm. thinks like, oh my God, that's so and so. Like, no, they got an assy attitude. Or, you know, you got to deal with craziness that surrounds them, you know, so it's not easy, but I just pray and I just keep going. And that's all you really can do because there's a greater purpose than other, other than just you. People always think about me, me, me. It's not about you. Right. It's really not. You're being used for others. Yes. And I definitely want to talk to you again, especially about all those souls that you are impacting on that dark side and how you're able to maintain your light in such darkness at times, especially because you're dealing with, you know, A-listers who, like you just said, some Mm -hmm. people have nasty attitudes. They have a Mm -hmm. gift but they don't have the gift of humbleness. And yeah. oftentimes yeah. It's, it's a lot of egos. And uh, so girl, we have so much that uh, we right. have to do round two. <laughs> nice, so. I look forward to it. I thank you for asking me to be a part. Yes, tell people how they can look you up, find out, hire you, what whatever it is that they need to do and connect with you. That's awesome. Yes, it's my name is Blue Artistry and that's B-L-U Artistry, no E. And my website is IamBlueArtistry.com. Um, you can also get me on Instagram or at Blue Artistry, um, on Facebook, Nikki Campbell. I'm just just mm-hmm. type in Blue Artistry and Google. It'll probably take you to a whole bunch of different stuff because I just try to make sure I'm just on Google somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yes. And like, she has a whole line of fedoras, y'all. They are yes, blue nice. Fedoras. Please <laughs> go look them up. Nikki, thank you. Thank you. Thank You've been you. a blessing to my soul today. And I just appreciate mm-hmm. you. So thank you. We will, we will have round two in the near, near future, but thank you so much for joining me today. It has been another episode of Life's a VK. Y'all see y'all later. You have been listening to Life's a VK podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. Every day you have a choice. So choose yourself and never allow your circumstances to dictate the life you live. Whatever you don't like, you can change. Remember, nothing happens overnight, but know that when you set goals and take inspired action, whatever you desire can come in perfect timing. Never give up on creating the life you deserve. Don't anticipate your next vacation when you could be living a whole life on vacation. Until next time, I'm your host, 
Cha Jones. Please remember to like and share this podcast so that others can be inspired. Peace.